Lads, we're back. Hello. Woo! Okay, so today, this may not be the first episode of these sort of types that you hear. It may be the first, second, third, or fourth. We don't know yet. Um, we're going to have some people on to sort of talk about the trade deadline with specific teams. Now, one of the most interesting teams in the league in the Atlantic or the Florida Panthers. And who else can we have on? You know him from Five Reasons Sports. Uh, I think his third time on the show. You know him. You love him. Please welcome on Alex Baumgartner. Bomber, how are you today, my friend? Doing semi-great. Um, time, time change, not so great. But first oh. episode I've been on where the whole crew is actually here. Yes. So yeah. instead oh, of uh, last time, it was like 1.5 on one podcast. Now it's actually two on one. So pretty happy about that. That's why yeah, I forgot that. Yeah. Jeez. Wild stuff. Wild stuff. A few episodes like that lately. I know. Right. It's yeah. been it just. Yeah. It's it's like um, it's I don't know. I was trying to make a joke. But it didn't come to me. Anyway, um, Alex, right now we look at the floor of the Panthers and. You think right now they're the guys, they're first in the Atlantic. We think they can score at will. They've got one of the best pairings in the league with Ekblag and Uyghur. Um, If we're looking towards the trade deadline, what is that primary need that you're thinking of right now? What do the Panthers need to set them over the edge? Until a couple of weeks ago, I was saying maybe the primary need is another defenseman, maybe slot him in left shot. Somewhere like that. Now, <laughs> certified top line right winger will put the team over the edge. That's what I want to see at the deadline. Adam is not up. So, you you might have yeah, ruined I, Adam's I, day. I, I, so, you won't, you won't, don't, I'm going to pitch Ben out later, whether Bomber likes it or not. Everyone's getting a piece of that today. Curtis, too. Mike, when he gets on, everyone's getting a piece of Ben Sherrod. It's interesting because I think a lot of that discussion was the defense in, earlier in the year. Um, I guess we can talk about that right winger because I think we all have a certain name in mind. And that guy's been the discussion around the league very, very much. Now, first, I should probably actually throw that over to uh, to uh, our boy, our boy Daniel here, actually. I forgot you were going to ask that. So go ahead, Al. Sorry, Daniel. No, no problem. Yeah, so, um, Alex, I really want to know, what is the interest f- on Claude Giroux for the Panthers and whether or not that's the fit that you see them put it, getting them over the edge? Well, we've seen reports come out saying that the Panthers were interested in Giroux. Um, there's also reports saying that Philadelphia was interested in Owen Tippett. Um, Owen Tippett has been tearing it up in the AHL. I think he, um, in 11 games, he has 10 points. He's not an AHL player. He just doesn't fit this Panthers team right now. Um, so based off the reports there, it sounds like there's interest and Claude Drew makes sense in Florida. Uh, over the last two seasons, they've been looking for a right winger to play with Barkov. Verhage. Big, uh, you know, I know you guys love Carter Verhage on this show. I love Carter Verhage. Verhage is that guy on the left wing. Very suitable left wing over Barkov. It works. And he doesn't always have to play with Barkov. He can create his own offense. Carter Verhage is a top six winger. Say that right now. Um, Other than that, they've been trying a lot to see who they can get up there. They've been putting Mason Marchman up there for a little bit. And while it kind of works... Mason Marshman is too electric on that third line with Anton Lundell and Sam Reinhart. So they shouldn't break that up if they don't have to. So I like Claude Giroux there because, you know, Claude Giroux is an elite player. I mean, his heydays are behind him, but he can still perform. And when someone hits the market like that, and it doesn't sound like you're going to have to give up way too much to get him, if it's a first, a prospect, and maybe filler, you got to do it, right? Mm-hmm. And that's pretty interesting when you mention a, a, a possible package for Claude Giroux. Um, do you see it whether or not he becomes just a rental for now or something that you could see be extended on less money afterwards? Um, and when you mention prospects, do you, is Florida in a position right now to kind of give up someone like Owen Tippett where he is, he is going to be an NHLer, but... He's someone you see right now, like, is he going to fit the long-term vision? Well, well, Florida has a lot of decisions to make because Owen Tippett right now, I don't think he has, I don't think right now he has, he's in their plans for this season. 
He had his chances. They put him in the lineup, sent him down for conditioning stints, put him back in, scratched him, started performing well again. But there, I guess there's just no place on this team. I think Florida has the deepest forward core in the NHL because, you know, Maxine Mammon can't get games sometimes. And when they put him on the first line, he plays pretty well. Um, can you can you repeat the question? Oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Um, so, like, for me, it's just wondering what, the value of a possible Claude Giroux trade would kind of be because you mentioned that. You know, oh, and he, then the re-signings, right? Yeah, the re-signings of whether or not okay. you give up Owen Tippett for a rental or you see Giroux as someone who could be here for another short term. So Giroux's 34. He's going to expire after this season. Florida has to start extending people very soon. But Brossi still has that contract for a couple more seasons. Mason Marchman is a UFA, so you got to make a decision if you're going to bring Mason Marchman back because he's going to get some suitors on the open market. Now, we talk about all the time, the no state tax, that helps a lot. Nice climate, that helps a lot. Contender, that helps a lot. And subsidizing how much you have to put into a contract. We've seen that with Tampa. We're starting to see that with Florida. You can see that in other you know, Southern teams with no state tax. That is a decision that they're going to have to look at. Also, Huberto is going to get a lot of money. He only he's has one more, and he's, not, and he's not going to Montreal. Huberto, 95%, I think he's going to stay in Florida. I mean, you see him at the pool on his Instagram stories. He doesn't want to live in Montreal. He doesn't want to drive in the snow. He wants to walk out in his shorts, listen to Mackenzie Weger's weather report. So I, don't, I think Claude Drew would be a rental. Now, the Panthers are in a situation where they look like they're one of the best teams in the NHL. They are one of the best teams in the NHL this season. But you got to add at the deadline because if you don't add, someone else is going to go add. Colorado might add. Tampa still might add. Everyone adds at the deadline. And Florida has a lot of prospects that doesn't fit this window. This team has a unique window where Bill Zito got everyone on three-year contracts. Everyone signed three-year contracts. Sam Reinhart, Bennett. Verhage, they're all around the same time. Forsling, they're all going to expire around the same time. Their window is three years, I think. That's when all their guys are in their prime. That's when all their contracts are in. It's three years. Denisenko, I don't think he's going to fit that three-year time period. So maybe they look at him. Maybe they move him. Tippett, I think they tried to see if he would fit that window. The fact that he's in the AHL this close to the trade deadline, I don't know. So I think they would do a package like that. Mm -hmm. um, I guess like a big thing right now is you've mentioned that forward uh, depth and what they could add there. And you have mentioned also the left side of the defensive end. Um, I'd like to throw that over to Adam. Thank you. Uh, yes. just, just one quick thing before I get into talking about trying to pitch you on Ben Chirot and more importantly, to see like how you feel about if they did do a Jacob Chicker and trade. I just quickly wanted to ask, because he's that number one trade chip really like in Florida, for people who may not know, what type of player is Owen Tippett? What does he bring to your lineup? Owen Tippett is a guy who clearly has a lot of skill. He's a fast skating, extremely hard shot winger he you can see flashes of skill every once in a while I almost feel like every time I watch him he's he kind of gives me a Sam Bennett without like the two-way vibes I think Sam Bennett's a pretty underrated two-way player just off the physicality I think Owen Tippett can drive the rush in a very similar way because they have a very similar skill set in my opinion Sam Bennett learned how to use his skill set to his advantage instead of trying to toe drag every time he comes into the offensive zone, which from my Calgary friends have told me he used to try and do that a lot in his earlier years. Now Sam Bennett uses his speed and his strength to drive the offense. I think Owen Tippett has the potential to do that because I've seen it before. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he just doesn't simplify the game enough, but he's mm -hmm. what, 23 years old. I believe he has lots of upside. I mean, top six, top six winger, in my opinion, if he's in the right system, it's just when you're on a team this stacked, sometimes you get lost and um, it might not be the best place to develop your game if you're not ready. So 
You know, if he goes into a situation where, you know, he's one of the guys, you know, like look at like a Chicago, some of their young guys tear it up because there's not a lot of guys there. Then, or like even Philadelphia now. So I think if you put Owen Tippett on a team that needs help, I think his game can, um, you know, progress that way. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I want to say maybe a week, two ago, Darren Dreger sort of gave us a knee, like on uh, not us personally, I wish, uh, but on insider trading talked about some of the primary suitors for Jacob Tricker and Florida was still there. Now, I think I did listen to the episode of five reasons sports you were on talking about Tricker in and sort of the, and I think you guys all turned, you said maybe for a cheaper price, you can go bench her up. I'll do it, man. I'll do it. Anyway, though, um, if we're looking at the Panthers, if they do pick up a Jacob Chirker and, um, you know, he's got the term, he's affordable. Um, we know that, and, you know, if you want to talk about Antoine Lundell, go ahead, because I know you're a big fan of him. But um, what is a legitimate package that you would be comfortable in, you know, maybe our boy Owen Tippett's in that conversation, a package that is actually realistic for the Panthers to give up in order to acquire a Jacob Chirker? Well, first of all, let's throw some actual legit reporters in here who have sources. Um, so Greg tweeted, Wish Wish Newski tweeted, um, one GM told him that the price is still high on on uh, Jacob Chikrin. David Dwork, who is a Florida Panthers beat reporter at a WPLG local ten, he is also at Five Reasons Sports YouTube, very legit. He tweeted this. This is on par with what I've been told of the asking price in any deal with Florida. Unless they lower the ask, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. David knows it's not going to happen. If Arizona is still looking for Anton Lundell, Spencer Knight, plus, first of all, they're out of their minds. <laughs> Second of all, it's not going to happen. Now, if we want to do a realistic package that I think is fair, mm-hmm. Jacob Trickern has term, he's young, he has an upside, and he has a really nice contract. He also has a modified no-trade clause coming in a couple years. So Arizona's best time to capitalize would be right around now. Mm-hmm. I would say first-round pick, Owen Tippett, and then you get your pick of Denis Sanko or Samiskovic. Those are two first-round picks. Mm-hmm. And then filler so a first round pick two former first round picks that were drafted in the last three years and then filler maybe another draft pick and another prospect b Mm -hmm. rated prospect filler something like that i think that's a decently fair trade to get a guy out of a place that isn't performing well Mm -hmm. fair enough fair enough um and And i don't think arizona would take that that's mm. just what I'm throwing out there. I, I don't understand why they're asking for more than Jack Eichel. <laughs> like it just doesn't make it, to me. It doesn't make sense. Like there's a discrepancy between those two players. Yet they're it's asking. Because they don't have to trade them, right? And it, you know, maybe that's their thing. If we don't have sure. to trade them, so you give them the boatload. But you know, I mean, we, but, we and also all year. Go ahead, sorry. If if well, if we're looking at what Bill Zito's done with his trades over the last year and a half he doesn't give up a lot for anything the sam reinhardt one was the biggest splash he made and he traded a seventh round goalie and a first round pick that's protected he got a top 10 protected protection on a pick for sam reinhardt i mean when i heard that asking price i laughed and i said that's not gonna happen because anton lundell is legit a second line center on most teams in the NHL. Mm-hmm. What is it you call him? The mini Barkov? Well, he plays like him a little bit. Um, they put him on the penalty kill. He gets soaks all the time. Great with his stick. He back checks two way player. Um, he's a rookie. He is two years older than when Barkov was when he entered the league. So it's kind of unfair for me to say he's better than Barkov his rookie season because mm-hmm. Barkov is also two years younger, but Anton Lundell is 20 and he legit looks like a future Selkie candidate, you know, five, mm-hmm. six years down the road. 100%. Um, one of the, one of the good, good crop for rookies this year. And Antoine Lundell is one of the, the, the more quiet ones definitely to talk about. Um, all right, Alex, I want your bomber. Sorry not to mix everyone up here. Okay. I, I want you to picture something for me here. Entertain me here. Okay. You know, obviously you got Uyghur and Ekblad and you know what a pairing. That's great. 
imagine, you know, it's the playoffs. You know, Marner and Matthews are busting down the wing. Ekblad's not on the ice. Let's say Leafs had last change or whatever, right? Okay. They don't go down the right because Radko Gudas is there. They don't want to cross that bridge. I mean, these guys are going to play together if it happens. But anyway, but then on the left, it's Ben Chirot. Can you just imagine it? How great would that be for the floor of the Panthers? Um, well, for, first of all, if that if there was if Ben Sherrod ever on the floor of the Panthers, they would never put him out there with Radko Gudis. That's the first thing that wouldn't happen. Oh, yeah, 100%. O- only Daryl Sutter would do that. Only Daryl Sutter mean, would do that. I mean, it would be fun. It would, he, let me dream. Let me dream. I, I don't think Andrew Burnett would put two bruisers out there. It would be funny, though. <laughs> Maybe not It'd a playoff fun. series. Sorry? Maybe not in a playoff series. Uh, um, uh, yeah, we, we, we kind of heard rumblings a couple months ago. Maybe Ben Sherratt was a target for the Panthers. Personally, if it was me, I wouldn't pursue it. I know that disappoints you. They also just signed uh, Pateri Lindbaum, who came from Yokerit, oh, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, um, you know, first game in was against Philadelphia. Two huge hits, both clean. He actually um, broke the boards. Florida just put in some new boards. Nice little digital display, and he broke <laughs> the boards on the hit. I'll send you guys the hit after, but it was one of the bigger hits I've seen all year. He's a big body guy. Now, I don't know um, how he's going to pan out in terms of the long term, but, you know, a nice six, seventh defenseman, and he shoots left. So, um, I, I don't know about Ben Sherratt. I don't know about oh. Ben Sherratt. All I'm saying is, you know what? You have Ben Trout in the playoffs four rounds deep. The, the, the GM's listening. I'm telling you, he's the right option. This will be the last one for me here, Alex. Um, or Bomber, crap. I'll we'll get it right eventually. Uh, Spencer Knight, I want to ask about him. Have you seen enough from his game, not only what he's played in the NHL, but uh, his time in AHL Charlotte? Have you seen enough to prove that he's a reliable backup at this point in his career? We know he's a very young goaltender. Let me make that very, very clear to people listening. <laughs> Um, or do you think the Panthers should go at the deadline and get like a nice cheap 3G, maybe a mop and bow if, if, if Jake Allen is there and healthy? I'm not saying you're going to give like a second. I'm just curious if you think you can rely on Spencer United at this point going into the playoffs. If something happens to Bobrovsky, that's all I mean. You know, Spencer Knight, after that playoff series, he came in. People said he's going to take Bob's job. And I got, I came on this show and I told you guys that wasn't going to happen. Yeah. I was right. And you could kind of tell he was a 20 year old goalie getting through the motions of a full NHL season. They sent him down to Charlotte to get some conditioning in, to get some starts. He came back. He looked lights out. When Spencer, Spencer Knight is so young and with young goalies, it's hard to tell for any goalie. It's hard to tell what's going to happen now. From what I've seen, I don't know who you can get off the market that's going to be available that's going to be better as a backup than Spencer Knight in the playoffs. I don't know. Would you like some names, actually, quickly? I would like to hear the names. So I put together, I call it the 100 names trade bait board. About 100 players that we've at least once in in reports heard some names. Sorry to cut you off there, Bobber, but just. No, no, I, I, I want to hear the goalies, yeah. So these are the, it seems to be maybe the market. Uh, Mark andre Fleury, probably not. Um, Simeon Varlamov, maybe not. Uh, Antoine Forsberg, um, James Reimer, Braden Holpe, Mackenzie Blackwood, probably not. Uh, Ilya Stamsonov, uh, Martin Jones, Georgiev, Halak, Corpusalo, Mike Smith, and uh, maybe Peter Morazic, probably not. But those are just some of the names that are probably out there. How'd you forget Charlie Lindgren? That's so unfair to him. Um, because I, listen, I, I only had a hundred names here. I wasn't putting him over like Calvin DeHaan or anything. Yeah, but he's going to go to Edmonton, but uh, stop it anyway. But those are some of the goalies out there. Maybe not the sexiest name, but like Martin Jones for like a fifth or something. Not too bad. Forsberg one. I like for a lot of teams. Yeah. Um, I think, I think that's one that, you know, should be looked at also. Florida is such a winning culture right now in terms of this season. Now, not all time, obviously. This is going to be the first back-to-back playoff appearances they've had since 1997 when they made the playoffs this year. 
96, they went to the cup finals and they went back to the playoffs in 97. They haven't been back to back since then. Um, I just, I just don't think it's necessary. I don't think the backup goalie is too much of a need. If Bob mm-hmm. goes down for bid within the next, what, when's the trade deadline? A week away? Monday. Yeah. Not yeah. this Monday, obviously. Yeah. Sorry. The so 21st. If, it, if, if he goes down on the next week, then yeah, maybe you want to like try and get one of those guys that you just mentioned. But other than that, I don't think it's too much of a need for the Panthers to get a third goalie. Sorry, fair enough. I forgot it was me there. Uh, go ahead, Alex. Um, so I want to shift away from the trade deadline a little bit. There's a couple topics that, that I think we should touch on since we have you here. First, um, you know, at the beginning of the season, after all that Kyle Beach stuff, obviously Joel Quenville was let go or fired from the Panthers, and they brought in Andrew Brunette. And, and he has done a hell of a job with with the Florida Panthers and he still has that interim tag uh on him it is i mean that that's got to go right at some point right in the relative future yeah there's no reason why it should still be there um it, it's going to be removed it has to be he came in the very tough situation to kind of come into and he you know he acted like a professional First time as a coach, interim coach, took over an extremely hot team and he didn't let anything slide. They had a couple rough patches here and there as every team would, but I've been pretty impressed with Andrew Brunette and he, he looks like he's more of coming into like the comfortability where you see when they're down in the game, he's not afraid to change up the lines. The power play looks a lot different now. The penalty kill is, is still bumping. It's going to get removed, I think. It's just, when do you do it? I don't think it's going to be done in the middle of the regular season or towards the end of the regular season. That's probably going to be a after the playoffs type of thing because I don't really see who they would bring in that would be better than him. The guys clearly love him. They clearly have the same, you know, fun, energetic, um, you know, environment that they had last season, transferred into this season. Um, probably after the playoffs, that tag will come off. Right. Um, and it's actually funny that we left this one till the end. That's probably the, the most dire question that needs to be asked. Uh, last week, there was some uh, kerfuffle, we'll call it, on Twitter between a certain NHL agent and a certain athletic reporter. I won't name names because that's unfair. Um, People email me saying that you're an embarrassment. Yeah. <laughs> Why should Jonathan Huberdeau be considered for the heart? Well, besides the fact that if he doesn't get heart votes, Alan Walsh is going to have a great day on Twitter. Um, he's going he's gonna to break the NHL left-wing points record. I think he's like five away from tying it right now. He's already broken the Florida Panthers single-season assist record twice. Um, you know, defensively, Jonathan Huberto looks like a different player, too. A lot of debate was coming from people that don't watch the Panthers saying Jonathan Huberto doesn't play defense. Well, that's not true at all. He's playing penalty kill now. He's making smarter plays. Now, Huberto used to turn the puck over a lot. Now, he, he still does it, but it's gone down a lot, in my opinion. He's back checking more. He's getting in lanes more, and he's still putting up the points. The heart's so interesting because are you going to give it to the guy with the most points? Are you going to give it to the guy who has the most goals? Are you going to give it to the guy whose team really needs him? That's what's so confusing about the heart, because I really don't understand what people are voting on. I would give, put him in my top three just because of the season he's having. To put up that kind of those kind of numbers on a team where you have five guys with 20-plus goals, he should be up there. Mm. I think it's fair. I think it's very fair. So top three, am I fair to guess that that's Matthew Shusterk and Hubert though? I have Matthews Huberto there, and I was right now it's just Sturkin, but I, I can't sleep on McDavid either, even though he's always in the conversation. Well, it was it two or three points last night for McDavid against Tampa? He's, he's heating up, but you can never count out uh, Connor McDavid. Okay. Well, Alex Bomber, Alex Baumgartner, the great guy. Um, great jerseys, always great hat. I'd love to have him on as always. Uh, thank you for your time as always. Um, if you want to just plug all your stuff, 
Floor is yours. Uh, honestly, I'll just keep it nice and short. A Baumgartner ninety one on Twitter. Great guy. All right.